Thank you. Thank you, everyone, and uh, thank you, Walpole, for having been also this year to a very important event for British luxury. <coughs> Let's start from a, um, a brief overview of what the luxury market of the markets uh, uh, is in uh, 2019. Uh, uh, this market encompasses several product categories and uh, not only uh, um, goods, but also experiences uh, and goods that lead to luxury experiences. This old market is worth 1.3 billion euros and it grew 4% at constant exchange rates. And in the last two, three years, we have to say that finally products over some, uh, after some years of experiences uh, uh, gaining the big share of growth, uh, uh, now products are growing on par with uh, uh, luxury experiences. Uh, this year we have focused our observatory that we developed in collaboration with Fondazione Alta Gamma on the customer. So we uh, um, uh, we elaborated all the market trends through the customer lens and through uh, different characteristics of the luxury customer and how is shaping and reshaping uh, the uh, luxury environment going forward. So let's start and go by uh, one by one. Uh, luxury customer is here and now, meaning that the market is uh, very solid, we are now into the new normal phase. In 2019, personal luxury goods market uh, is worth uh, uh, 281 billion euro and grew 4% at cost and exchange rate and 7% in, uh, in euro. Um, this market grew relentlessly for the last um, 20 years uh, with few bumps along the road, just one big bump due to exogenous events in 2009, but then the, uh, the bump back uh, uh, has been very, very, uh, very, very strong. So this is a mature market, it's a solid market, uh, and uh, uh, even if in the last uh, weeks we have some exogenous events that are shaking a little bit our consumptions and are making these uh, uh, prediction for 2020 quite uncertain, uh, we are uh, very um, solid in restating that in the midterm we confirm our predictions. So we confirm that this market has very, very solid fundamentals. The customer is there, the economic fundamentals is there in terms of wealth, and also the willingness to buy into this sector is uh, there for the customer all around the world and throughout generations. So uh, we uh, confirm our prediction of a uh, low mid single digit uh, uh, growth to 2025 and in general in the, in the mid term. The customer is more and more Chinese. Uh, in uh, uh, 2019, only mainland China grew 30%. And if you consider that mainland China uh, accounts only for one-fourth of the actual consumption of, Ch of Chinese customers, Chinese customers already are 35% of the overall market. And we continue predicting that to 2025, Chinese customers will be about uh, between 45 and 50% of this market, but repatriating more than half of their purchases. So this is changing the picture uh, and the geographic picture of, uh, uh, of different regions. Um, the customer then, farther than being Chinese and together with being Chinese, is becoming younger and younger. All marketers uh, talk about millennials, talk about millennial customer. We have to consider that millennials, some millennials now are almost 40 years old, so they are not so young, they are not so the, ne the next generation. Uh, if we um, consider and if we uh, just project this market in not only in 2025, but in 2035, we have a full generation arising, that is the, the Gen Z. And these two generations together that delivered 100% of the growth, so the total growth of 2019 was delivered by these under 40 year old customer will deliver to 2035 uh, 1.5 of the growth of the total luxury market. Uh, the interesting thing is that Gen Z is 
completely different from their bigger brothers, from, from the millennials. They are not only customers, they are actors. They want to act, interact, and be proactive in, in this industry, and they want to have a dialogue with, uh, uh, with brands. Uh, fortunately enough, they are born fully digital, so they are back to physical. They are back to product, through which they want to live the experiences, and pro they live the product as just one of the many touch points that they might have with the, uh, uh, with the brands. They are also back to stores. So so we don't project the closure of 80% uh, of the luxury stores worldwide. They consider the store the key touch point to have uh, an emotional and a personal exchange with, uh, uh, with the brand uh, uh, and with this, uh, with this industry. They also change their um, influencing factor. They are not only uh, influenced by the classic celebrities, but their main source of interest are family and, and friends and their small circle of acquaintances. And they are more into the accomplished influencers, so uh, sport players or, or champions or, or someone that delivers something in a very pragmatic way in their life and that can be a role model for, uh, for something for, uh, for that. Then they, they are born uncertain by nature. So if you consider that most of the uh, Gen Z don't recall where they were on September 11 because they were like two, three years old or they weren't born yet. Uh, so they are born in a totally and globally uncertain uh, uh, era. Uh, since they are uncertain about the future, they are much more responsible and much more sober about how they consume fashion and luxury. Uh, uh, so they are much more into recycling and much more into making their own uh, uh, fashion and their own, uh, uh, and their own luxury. Luxury customer is there also more and more digital. So uh, e-commerce that we uh, remember in this industry is lacking back, is lagging behind other industries in terms of e-commerce penetration, um, is 12% uh, uh, of the total market in 2019. But we are projecting an acceleration of this penetration, becoming 25% up to uh, 2025. Still, the big chunk of uh, consumptions are made through e-tailers because the, the key factor uh, uh, pushing the luxury customer to buy online is assortment and is the choice of brands and is the service. And the e-tailers are the ones that are delivering the best service now to, to the customer. Still, brands are over-investing in their platform and they are uh, uh, definitely catching up in terms of uh, growth rates and in terms of important to, uh, to the customer. Still, if we consider the bigger picture and not only personal luxury goods, uh, we see how personal luxury is the most uh, um, uh, the most permeated uh, uh, and uh, uh, the most represented online category versus the bigger picture of other luxury uh, categories uh, where, for example, food and wines and spirits are the least penetrated categories uh, online with 4 5% of, of penetration. So for all the bigger, let's say, luxury sector, uh, there is for sure big room for growth in the online and channel uh, ecosystem in the, next, uh, in the next years. Luxury customer is still very diverse. So let's start from the top of the pyramid. Uh, we have globally 200,000 uh, ultra net worth uh, household that translates into more than 600,000 ultra net worth individuals using this wealth and tapping into, uh, into luxury. And if we have to uh, segment, these uh, uh, ultra net worth individuals are well represented in all uh, areas with uh, APAC uh, taking the lion's share with 40% of these globally. Uh, and these ultra uh, rich represent already one third of the market. So they are very, very important and they ask from this industry basically what 
money can buy because they can buy basically everything but they ask for emotions they ask for feelings they ask for experiences that money cannot uh, uh, buy for them from these brands and and the brands that are able to uh, make these uh, customer loyal are uh, uh, really have really a competitive advantage for for the future on the other end we predict that the big chunk of uh, a uh, number of new customers in this industry that is uh, uh, represented by 390 million people in 2019 and will become 450 million people in uh, 2025 will uh, come from the belly of the pyramid so from the aspirational uh, customer from the entry to luxury customers and uh, Again, all the brands are now stretching their offer and are now increasing the level of creativity. All the brands uh, uh, forever had the entry prices, but now the customer that tap into entry prices is not just the aspirational customer that cannot buy the bag, but want the small leather goods, uh, but the customer is uh, very knowledgeable about this industry and wants the same level of creativity that he can find on the bag, even on the, the entry price. That is why these uh, uh, entry prices have become a core part of the offer for all the brands and now represents for two big categories, for example, for leather, more than 35% of the, of the market already, and for jewelry already, uh, almost one third, uh, one third of the market. Customer then is uh, is very open, and this is challenging for luxury. Um, luxury customer is open to new value proposition and to new business model. Let's start from value proposition. So. Uh, and let's start from, from two examples that are shaking the respective industries. So one is Indie Beauty. Indie Beauty that is not necessarily at a luxury price point, but it's insurgent brands that are direct to customers that are, have an engaging uh, um, conversational model with the customer are really challenging the typical uh, premium uh, perfume and, and premium beauty sector and together with this also the luxury the luxury sector on one side the other side is uh, underwear uh, there are many inclusive brands uh, and uh, 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 new underwear brands that are again direct to consumers and are building communities of women around this uh, uh, so intimate category that are reshaping the rules of the game luxury customers is uh, really knowledgeable today and is also ready to switch from luxury brand to this very innovative value proposition if they find a higher value or, or a higher set of values that uh, they can relate with. So this is becoming more challenging for luxury brands also to tap into these new uh, trends and new value, value proposition. On the other side, there are the new business models, so the rentals, the second-hand markets that are becoming more and more important and that the luxury brands should see not as a threat but as an opportunity to enlarge their customer base and uh, um, and have uh, and tap into this new customer that probably in the future will become a, a core customer of uh, of the brand customer is responsible uh, 60 percent of luxury customer thinks that brands should be more engage in responsibility rather than other industries and 80 percent of luxury customers says that they prefer brands that are socially responsible uh, and uh, we have uh, talked about these uh, also this uh, this morning about that so responsibility is not only environmental responsibility can have different way of uh, uh, of, of having these, these uh, uh, responsibility um, pillars in society, in philanthropy, in education, in animal welfare. There are many facets of responsibility. The important thing is to be authentic in being responsible. So luxury brands should not shoot for responsibility or social responsibility at large, but should be very uh, um, focused in uh, uh, winning some battles in responsibility and standing for something that is authentic to the brand, authentic to the, to the company, and that the customer can see as authentic as well. 
luxury customer is emotional as well. So we come from uh, many different years and many, many different eras where uh, luxury was mainly about product. Then there was experience together with product. So the experience lived with, with the product. Now we are more in the, in the era of uh, the ideas, in the era of platform, of conversations and on marketing platform between uh, luxury and, and customers. Actually, the, the real um, reasons why luxury customer is buying into this sector is emotions. And the real differentiators of this industry versus others are the emotions. And luxury brands should rethink all their touch points to make them more emotional for their customers. Um, Again, this is not a, uh, a fundamental uh, product to, uh, to buy. So it is, uh, of course, discretionary spending. And emotions and feelings are really what are uh, pushing the luxury product, to, the luxury customer to buy uh, in, this, uh, in this category today. So we have seen how the luxury customer in 2019 uh, is uh, uh, characterized and how is evolving. So he, luxury customer is, is interacting, is much more active and proactive in this industry, is watching this industry, is also judging this industry. So he's observing, he's not again a spectator, but he's becoming an actor. So how uh, global brands, but in this, uh, in this context, uh, British luxury brands can win to build the future in line with customer evolution. So first of all, recognizing that we are in a post-digital era, uh, meaning that technology uh, doesn't give you the uh, uh, competitive advantage anymore, but it's just a new baseline where to, to base all the strategies and all the human interactions and, and physical interactions that are needed to these, uh, to these industries. Where product alone and product excellence is not enough, your product must be good, must be uh, transparent, and, and transparency uh, need to be built across the value chain, not only to, to product or to uh, or to supply chain, where your interaction and your marketing model must be uh, culturally relevant. So must be relevant for the cultural uh, aspects of the place where it's lived by the customer and in that specific uh, uh, moments in a very open, inclusive, and non-binary way. So without uh, uh, definitions uh, and, uh, and without strong categorization where emotions need to lead the way and need to, leave all, and need to lead all the touch points and the interactions between brands and, and customer mm -hmm. in a high-tech and high-touch environment. So physical interaction, but also technological interaction that needs to go together and needs to build really the uh, luxury ecosystem of the future. Thank you. Um, we've got time for a couple of questions, if we've got any questions from the audience. Someone down that way? No, no questions? That was a brilliant uh, presentation, as always, Frederica. Thank, Thank you. you very, very much. Sorry. There is a, sorry, there is a question. Apologies, you. I, didn't, I was looking at I didn't see there. Apologies. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Thank you for your presentation. Um, I was curious to see on one of the slides, it talked about the fine art market um, being in decline. Um, what role do you... I mean, I'm be curious to know how you get to that statistic, given the uh, lack of regulation in that sector. Uh, however, uh, be curious to just get your broader thought about the role of art in the luxury sector, either direct selling or, or collaborative uh, approaches. Yeah, the, the fine art market, uh, uh, of course, is not uh, easy to, to estimate. We have several sources. In 2019, there have been less uh, uh, sale of big pieces, which are, of course, making this, uh, uh, this market more volatile and more unpredictable versus, uh, versus other industries. And that is why we see a, a, negative, uh, a negative sign, a profound negative, uh, uh, negative sign. So this is, this is the reason. And, uh, 
uh, this. There are some sources, plus we com some public sources for this industry, plus we complement with uh, uh, interviews to experts and our uh, panel and, and consensus. Thank you. Thank you.